I think because uh, I've been indoctrinated very early into the emotional realms of uh, painting specifically that it, it seemed linked to interpersonal relations and it's very emotional the tie to to the time the actual experience of painting has uh, a lot of potency as does uh, what what remains the evidence the painting the tactile residue of, uh, of that emotional experience it's it's just right there in front of you it doesn't have to be uh, read as a book is read over time and turned into something else with your brain and you don't have to listen to it as you do with music for uh, the length of a song it's just right there confronting you or consoling you or providing you with the evidence that uh, that that time the time within which you made this painting and all of those pushings and pullings of emotions of your self-worth and your ability to convey what it is you want to convey or do you have anything at all to convey all of these tendencies fragile little nuances of fragments of what we're made of that are jarring up against each other are there to just be in front of and absorb in this unrelenting juxtaposition. This to me is something about painting that of course I conjured all that up much later but that's kind of the emotional basis of, of what it was like to to uh, to paint as a young child really into my teens and beyond because of the importance that painting had within the group, the family. It's very kind of pulled, pulled together, not a lot of outside influences coming into this, this small family. So I, I learned that painting was an extremely important thing and there were there were a lot of extraneous emotional sort of demonstrations about its importance. It's it's a lesson in, in what quality was for me at that time. It was so obvious that certain paintings were the source of quality and others were absolutely not. Uh, and it was also a time when both my parents were experimenting and, and beyond experimenting with abstract art because that was the era that they they were painting in. So this was this was very exciting and it, in many ways I think for them it it was political to deviate as they had been brought up with realism and the act of capturing scenes before there were so many ways to capture scenes uh, and then the camera came into everyone's hands and movie cameras and videos so it suddenly became probably should have become even less important to to be able to demonstrate what was in front of you in terms of realism so they were at that, that fascinating time in history where abstraction was tearing away a lot of the the formal ideas about quality and what what art 
should intend to do. It should intend to show us realistic interpretations of, of maybe things that we don't know about, faraway places or what farm animals look like or industrial scenes or portraiture. And then you get the mayhem of Cubism or the brutality of Francis Bacon and and all hell breaks loose and paint cans are popping their lids and things are being dumped and poured and they're using big huge brushes or broken up credit cards and swiping and swooping in with acrylic paint suddenly. So it was a very exciting time for me, not knowing the, the context of uh, what came before other than through my parents' uh, ability to, to reference that it hadn't always been this way. Uh, to me it was, it was very important to consider the depth of their self-expression and I suppose Thank God they were very, very emotional people. Emotional in terms of they expressed <laughs> maybe not a wide range of emotions, but a, a kind of a, a depth of uh, volatility. So to me, painting was very closely hinged to emotions. Just...